Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome to What's Cooking. If you couldn't tell, Joe and I are in the spirit in our Christmas sweaters. Joe, hit him with the light. Oh, man. It's fragile. <laughs> fragile. Check that thing out. So, we are excited. Our boy Chad cooked a prime rib last year, but our friend Joe here is going to take his stab at prime rib. And Joe, tell me a little bit about your recipe we got going on here. Man, I am super excited. We are gonna cook this piece of meat today. Uh, we got this prime rib from our local butcher. We're gonna season it up. We're gonna do a four day salt brine with some kosher salt. We're gonna season it with boar's night out. We're gonna use our new meter, which is gonna help us do this prime rib perfectly. This thing tells us even how long to rest it for. It'll predict when this piece of meat is gonna be done. I love cooking for a lot of people, and prime rib is a way to cook for a ton of people all at once, especially on special occasions like Christmas. Awesome. Well, Chad's prime rib was awesome last year. I'm excited uh, for your take on this. And I know earlier we were talking about a Manhattan roast. Can you tell me a little bit about that, a cheaper option, and what people can look for in that? Yeah, so a Manhattan roast is a New York strip just in roast form. But the big trick with a Manhattan roast, there's a long tendon that goes through the back. So you need to take that tendon out. If you have a butcher that you trust, go in, ask them to do that for you. They'll take that tricky cut and take care of it for you. Very cool. Well, we are actually dealing with a uh, November rainstorm here in Fargo, North Dakota. So we got our Traeger outside. We are still gonna get this cooked done in some rain. It might switch to snow, put us in the spirit. We're gonna get some Christmas music going and we're gonna have some fun. So Joe, let's get started. Let's do it. Just gonna trim some of the hard fat that's not gonna render out of this. Is there anything you could do with that fat? Yeah, we could make it into tallow if you'd like. Um, a lot of barbecue guys are saving this, or if you've gotten a deer recently, this is good fat to grind in with your ground venison. We're gonna take this big chunk of fat off the end, and then we're gonna end up trussing this so it cooks evenly. So the knives I'm using today are Shun's. Uh, it's a Japanese style knife. Um, really, really sharp, bit finer of an edge on it. Uh, they're made a little bit harder steel, so they hold an edge really well, but they're kind of difficult to sharpen if you do your own sharpening. That's all right, because Shun will sharpen this knife for free for the life of the knife. You just have to pay for the shipping to get it to them, and they sharpen their knives out of Oregon. Um, they also come with a lifetime warranty, so if you broke the tip off this knife and sent it in, they would send you a replacement. Yeah, I'm just feeling for any hard fat that's left in here. There's plenty of intermuscular fat, so I'm not worried about this piece of meat drying out. I just don't want to get a big fatty bite in the middle of it. Cooking these big family meals is not just how good it tastes, but kind of bragging to the rest of the family on how good it turns out. You always want your father-in-law to think you're a better chef than he is. Are you better? Yes, a hundred percent. Don't tell him that. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> That's nice and clean. Now we're gonna truss it up. And we're trussing this just for it to cook even. We don't want this piece to be sitting out the side. The more round, the more even it can look, the better it's gonna cook. start our dry salt brine. So this looks like a lot of salt, but it is a lot of meat that this salt is gonna go through. If you're gonna do this, it's gonna take four days to open air. So you need somewhere where you can keep it cool for that long. By the time it is done with its four day rest, you will not see any of the gran granules of salt on there anymore. We won't rinse it. We won't do anything other than add a little bit of seasoning and it's gonna turn out great. All right, it's ready for a four day dry salt brine by the power of movie magic. Ta-da! Big thing to remember with these, you need to use kosher salt. Um, iodized salt will make it way too salty. It needs to be kosher. That is a big thing. And then you do have to wait the four days. If you don't wait long enough, 
the outside will be very, very salty while the inside did not get seasoned. Now that it's taken its four day dry bath in kosher salt, we're gonna season it up with Boris Night Out White Lightning. Add a little bit of garlic flavor to it. It'll help with the crust as well. I want this seasoning. Yeah. We use this on burgers, popcorn, vegetables. It's a go-to at our house. All right, I think it's ready to cook. Let's get the meter in there. This meter thermometer is wireless. The box is the uh, Bluetooth amplifier, so this needs to stay on the grill, otherwise it won't send the signal to your phone. It'll tell us exactly how long this piece of meat is gonna take. It can read the grill temp from this piece, the meat temp from the probe, and yeah, it'll calculate how long you need to rest this piece of meat as well. So let's go get it on the Traeger. We got it set to 250 degrees, and we'll get going. Pretty simple cook on this one. Joe is actually gonna start chopping this thing up and uh, uh, we'll, then we'll start trying this. We also have some horse radish sauce here. Uh, Joe, is this from Just Home and Hardware? Do we have this at all our shields? Those are in a few shields. Um, you can get it on the website as well. Uh, Terrapin Ridge makes a ton of different stuff. Um, all of them are super tasty, different dips. They make jellies. Uh, bunch of different things. Awesome, and actually fun fact, I'm sure no one cares, but I actually had horseradish for the first time this week and now I'm having it again for the second time in one week. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to try something. We didn't dip uh, anything last time we had this. How'd that cook turn out? You know what, it's looking really good. It's looking really, really good. Ooh. It's gonna be right at that medium rare spot. Our roast beast is gonna be delicious. <laughs> yeah. Love the Grinch reference. Look how tender that is. It's one of those things, nice um, you want to rest these. That rest time is crucial for this, otherwise it's gonna dry out really quickly. How long was that rest, it. 20 minutes? That was a 20 minute rest on Perfect. that before we seared it. Let's give this thing a try, huh? I guess we'll have to try horseradish one more time if you're saying this is the ticket. It's the way Is that about a good amount? Yep, that's the stuff. All right. Mm. Man, so it's got a zip to it. Woo. Absolutely. And with all that salt we put on, not over salted. There's no saltiness there really for the most part. Nope, it seeps all the way through the meat so you don't get a ton of salt on the outside of it. But it adds a lot of moisture. It holds the moisture in the meat. Well, there you guys go. Easy cook, delicious prime rib Christmas recipe. Coming back for some more Christmas recipes and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>